Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand in watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And hello, this is Clyde J. Kell, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast. Tonight we're on a Tuesday. Normally we meet on Mondays, but uh, I had a power failure. Uh, a serious ice storm came through the Oklahoma City metro area, and I was without power for about eight hours, right when the time when we do the recording. So we are here on Tuesday, October the 27th, for the last episode for the month of October. And I am here, this is episode, that's episode 68 of the Artist Friends Podcast. And I am here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. And hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. And uh, thank you, too, for uh, keeping me company, especially now that it's gotten cold. Winter has hit. Oklahoma City hit us hard. I didn't even have my furnace turned on this yet. <laughs> but, yeah. And I'm lucky that I'm still able to broadcast tonight. We're able to record this t- tonight because all around me there's power outages. So I really feel for those people. So uh, I hope uh, they've been posting with their phones on uh, on Facebook. And I, I'm wishing the best that they, they stay warm and uh, stay safe. Okay. This week... The theme for this episode is uh, artist community and artists getting lonely. And I think we, uh, the three of us, we qualify for that because after, uh, you know, last week, our special tribute to Paul Klein, it was Paul Klein that kind of brought us together. But if we had not decided to continue meeting, at least in our respective parts of the world, I think we would be lonely, solo, sorrowful, sad <laughs> artists. What do you think, Diane? You think that would be the case? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know that I ever have a problem with being lo- feeling lonely because I do like being by myself normally anyway. But um, it, it definitely is nice having other artists friends to talk with and you know people that understand like the things you deal with and you know um things that happen to you and when you get new new uh instruments or whatever (laughs) you know somebody else that can understand your excitement I know (laughs) things like that (laughs) you two were just all giddy about how how excited I was on on a year ago when I got me some new paints you know (laughs) 
<laughs> Afterwards, I thought, God, I made a fool out of myself. You know, <laughs> oh, no, we totally get it. We totally understand. <laughs> that's a, that's the thing. It's nice to have somebody that understands because most people around you, you know, if they're not artists, they don't get it. <laughs> no. Nope. I got a new tool in today. I bought an um, antique uh, tack hammer, so I can. I'm going to try doing the canvases with tacks and. Oh, you're gonna so, yeah. So you're you're gonna go ahead and stretch your own canvas then. You're gonna start. Well, to- I've been stretching them myself for years, but I haven't stretched them with copper nails or copper tacks, and I've been using a staple gun all this time. So I thought I would try using um, copper tacks and rabbit skin glue and the uh, the other stuff that you make with the rabbit skin glue to to prepare the canvases with to see if I like that or not. So hmm. calcium carbonate. And then you tone them down and uh, uh yeah i was gonna try that out and see if i liked it okay wow yeah i don't know if, I, I don't know if i'm <laughs> really the cat the rabbit skin glue is just like jello except no flavor or anything it's just i guess it's done it's gelatin is what it is why have you and tried it peels to, off you, the fabric huh you said, you said flavor why did you, did you taste some <laughs> No, I didn't taste it, but I know that it's like jelly because I didn't use it all. I put it in the refrigerator and it looks like jello with nothing in it. <laughs> it's kind of like glue, you know. Yeah. So yeah. that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I used to do that years ago. I haven't done, I haven't used rabbit skin glue lately, but I used to do a lot of that years ago. Wow. Well, I've got one prepared with rabbit skin glue. All I have to do now is to make the the other with the calcium carbonate and put layers of that on, so. Absolutely. Well, for our listeners, this this is what I'm talking about when I say <laughs> our community. I mean, we're uh, we're all excited. I mean, some of you non-artist listeners are saying, "Why are you talking about rubber skin glue?" Well, no, for an <laughs> artist, that's exciting stuff. Me personally, yeah, never- it's a it's an old master's um, procedure for getting your canvases ready to paint on, and I've always either bought them pre pre-primed or else I've stretched them myself and primed myself but with the acrylic just suck and this is a different method and I understood from what listening to some other people that it's a really nice surface to paint on when you do it that way so I thought I'd try it yeah, out it and see if I like it you know so. it is nice to work on because yeah. I started toning my canvases <clears throat> all the time which is something I never used to do I used to just paint right onto a white canvas and never tone it tone it down before I started painting it but I like toning it down now before I paint. I know you can get some pre-toned, but it's just kind of neat to just do it yourself, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and in well, case anybody doesn't know about the rabbit skin glue thing, with especially with oil paint, you want to seal the surface so that your the oil from the paint doesn't deteriorate the canvas. Right. And that's the whole idea behind using um, the rabbit skin glue and the gesso and stuff. It kinda, it mm-hmm. built, it's like a barrier for your paint. Between your right. and the hmm. Okay. I think this is fantastic because I remember uh, two years ago. Yeah, about two years ago when, you know, Constance, she was really heavy into her jewelry making. She kept saying, I want to get back into oil painting. It's like every other episode, she would say, I'm going to get back into <laughs> oil painting. And then she got into pastels and she was doing with the, the, the you know, the pastels and, and, but I'm going to get back into oil painting. And look what happened. Now <laughs> she's, into oil painting. Now she's full blown. And she has been doing some fantastic art, folks. I t- let me tell you, you ought to go to, uh, what's uh, what's that, the site? Daily, Daily Paint Works. Yeah, that's the site. Yeah. Daily Paint Works. Daily yeah, Paint I'm starting Works. to get things com, uploaded right? there. Yes. And you just you know, type in her Type name. in my name. And you'll, you'll find see me. some of the stuff that she's doing. She's really doing some fantastic uh, work. So I have some pastels on there too. So I, so I, can, I go know, back and forth. So when I talk about community, this look what look what we're doing. I mean, you know, we're we're really meeting each week. You know, we're because I remember vividly. You know, she was talking about it, and both me and Diane, you know, we're we're saying, "Well, you ought to do it." Yes, you know, and. <laughs> And then yeah, my, it helps my, having the encouragement. <laughs> it does. And then help my journey. I remember vividly my journey about uh, you know I was wanting to get back into oil painting. I mean I was doing acrylic and I was doing watercolors. You know and my whole rationale for doing that 
Well, that's because they're non-toxic and, you know, I won't intoxicate myself in my small apartment. And then Diane said, well, why don't you use walnut oil? And I was like, what? And she told me all about the <laughs> walnut oil paints. And then the, so after that, that night, after that session, I got online. I looked it up. I said, oh, my God, these are wonderful. And I found <laughs> Yeah, know, there's just a whole world of new products out there. Yes. That so then this last year. What was it? I think last year, it was coming up this time. About a year ago. Yeah, yeah it was uh, Black Friday. Uh, I mm -hmm. got me my first set of, of uh, from M the M. Graham Company of walnut oil paints, okay? Mm -hmm. And then I got me the walnut oil for cleaning the brushes and the walnut alkyd, you know, as a medium. And then it wasn't what I held on to them for like three months. And these two kept saying, <laughs> well, when you, well, 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 when are you going to, you know, start <clears throat> painting, you know? Well, then I finally did my first painting, but then the painting, it was fun and everything, but I had these cheap brushes and the brush hairs came out and I was screaming at it. Diane, our no constant office <laughs> solution about a vendor called Bucket Brush, or, you know, whatever. And so I ordered some. Now I have a set of professional brushes, both oil paint and watercolor and um, acrylic brushes, which is just fantastic. And this is all because of our little community, folks. We, you know, we offer each other tips and everything. And, uh, boy, I'm going full-blown. And after our uh, tribute to Paul Klein, when in the process of producing that, I was looking at some of the other videos when I did my one-on-one -on -one session. And, of course, his strategy with the pulp radio art, where we came up with that name and, the doing the illustrations based on my old time radio programs. Now I've reissued my pulp radio. I'm getting back into that. <laughs> so this is this is what community is all about. It's kind of like what the, on one of the recommended videos was with Raffi and Clee. You know, I know Constance likes those that young couple when they were talking about you know of, of uh, doing getting into your 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 art. And uh, let's see, what's the term they used? Uh, what was that? Uh, finding your greatness. Yeah, finding your greatness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is such a cool term. I mean, those two are not pretentious. They're they're just working artists. It's a real enjoyable to uh, to listen to them and everything. So, uh, Constance, have you found your greatness yet? <laughs> I I don't know. <laughs> I'm always looking for my greatness. I'll say that. <laughs> I think that's a process finding your greatness, you know. Um, yeah. What yeah. about you? What about you, Diane? Great, I had a teacher one time that said your greatness is your uniqueness developed, and okay. I think you earn that by doing, and that's how you earn that. Absolutely, so. Diane. Have you found your greatness yet? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess I have. I mean, I kind of know what you know what. Um, inspires me and where my um, process is sort of coming from and um, but I mean it's sort of an elusive thing too at the same time like you're always trying to be better and they, they talked about this too like you, you you go through these cycles when you're working on paintings like or any artwork really um, where you you know you get into it and then you you think it's a piece of crap and then you're like <laughs> it looks horrible and you're like gonna give up and <laughs> you keep yeah. you work on it some more and then then it starts looking pretty good again it's like you know you kind of go back and forth so it's but like every painting is you know you're building on the next one you do like is built on the ones you've done previously so I mean I you're you're always striving to you know improve and all that so like Stephen Bauman says each painting is practice for the next one you know yeah, is it, it here is. you know, have a lot of people you know they say well that's I'm just going to practice no go full board go put all you can into it because then that is practice for the, for the next one you know and yeah. uh, this painting I finished up this last week that I took uh, you know almost two weeks to do which is extremely long for me you know when I was trying the uh, <laughs> oil glazing the old master's technique of oil glazing I think I found my greatness in that piece because what got me so excited when I finally decided to put like the, the seventh and final layer and touch upon it, it, I've got such a 3D effect and such depth that 
it looks like you can just reach your hand in there and grab that bottle, you know, off the shelf or grab that rose off the shelf. And it, it just thoroughly excites me. In fact, I usually don't get that excited about some of my art, <laughs> but that, that piece, it was, it was enjoyable. There were stages when I was going to stop. I mean, I, I put on like the third or fourth layer and the boil. And of course I couldn't put on a whole lot because you know, you had to wait for sections of it to dry. Well, of course, and the whole purpose of me doing that painting was uh, to slow myself down, which I'm glad I did. I, I achieved, you know. So going forward, that will probably be, you know, my technique. Uh, I'll still do my watercolors. And I, like I said, I'm going to do my pulp radio art illustrations. But um, I'll, uh, I'm trying to slow myself down. And I'm finding out that, I'm able to find my greatness. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's take that's a good point to take a break and for a message, and then we will be right back. Hello, this is Clyde J. Kale, and let me tell you about something that's very exciting: my pulp radio art illustrations visit p-u-l-p-r-a-d-i-o-a-r-t.com that's pulpradioart.com prints are available for purchase right from the site p-u-l-p-r-a-d-i-o-a-r-t.com pulpradioart.com each illustration is based on these fantastic radio plays and with each purchase so that I can continue to broadcast these outstanding old-time radio shows. Please consider making a purchase. Again, that's P-U-L-P-R-A-D-I-O-A-R-T dot com. PulpRadioArt dot com. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Welcome back, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 68, for Tuesday, instead of Monday, Tuesday, October 27th, the last episode for the month of October. And now, I got to put my glasses on here, because now we are, this brings us up to a point of setting goals, and Diane and Constance will probably uh, not ever talk to me again, folks, so... <laughs> If we don't do any more future episodes, you will know why I ticked these two off. <laughs> I did a little bit of research. And what I want to do is about our presence on the internet. Now, following the Gary Vanacek model, this is more for getting attention and branding. So by using the different social media and different services on the internet, that's what you're out. You're not so much as... as acquisition if you sell a painting or sell some artwork fine but it's more about branding and getting your name out so i search research some of the sites that uh, we use that all three of us are on and find our america so let's go with diane first <laughs> <laughs> that's paltry <laughs> <laughs> Di Di on find our america as of yesterday diane had se about 738 visitors Oh, better than I thought. <laughs> yeah, and on Instagram, she had 797 followers. <laughs> and on LinkedIn, she had 94. And on Twitter, she had 90. Now, it's not so much as to embarrass, but what it is, is our goal is that by next Monday, on she can pick whichever one she wants, whichever one is the easiest. I know she has a life and other things to do, so she can't be spending that much time you know, but uh, she has to have an increase of just 5%. So that would mean if she picked Fine Art America, by next Monday, she'd have to have 775 visitors. If she picked Instagram, she would have to have 836. LinkedIn, 99. And Twitter, 95. So she could pick, if she can get a 5% increase on all of them by next Monday, that would be fantastic. Not only a 5% increase, Diane, but then next Monday we'll take a little bit of time and you explain what you did to get that increase on whichever one of those that is easiest for you to do. 
All right. Okay. Constant, now it's Constance's turn. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Final Hour America, Constance had 1,509 visitors as of yesterday. On Instagram, she had 623 followers. On LinkedIn, she had 100, 112 followers, connections. And on Twitter, she had 190. I didn't even know she was on Twitter until tonight when she told me. So, um, the, uh, and of course, a 5% increase would be, you know, just increase whichever one you want. On all of them be fine, but hey, pick whichever one you want that you have the easiest that you know how, but then you've got to explain what you did to get that increase. Now, either you bribe, you sent some money, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or contacted all your friends that, hey, I'm in this contest. I got to win. <laughs> whatever it takes. <laughs> all right. Okay. okay. Now, now it's Clyde. I know you two, and you two hate to hear me, but hey, I get, <laughs> I get, I get a crow. My Fine Hour America, because I consider it as my main site, which is why my numbers are so high. I have 47,861 visitors. You have so, the hardest work to do then, don't you? Then by by <laughs> by next week, then I've got to have at least 50,000, a little over 50,000 with a 5% <laughs> increase. My Instagram, I have 1,237. So I got to have like 1,298 by next week if I choose that. LinkedIn, I have 1,721. So with a 5% increase, it'd be 1,807. And Twitter is 2,774. So I got to have a 2,913 for 5% increase. Now, I almost wouldn't going to include Twitter because Twitter, I've had it, of all the social media, I've had it the longest because I used it from our internet radio station. You know, I was on Twitter when it first came out, which is how I built up that 2000. It, it's interesting, 2,774, and it goes up and down, sometimes uh, up to as high, it's been up to as high as 2003, uh, 2,800, and then it's dropped. So, you know, Twitter goes off and on. And all I do with Twitter is I just post uh, information about my uh, radio station. And I have, every time I post an image on Instagram or post an image on uh, Facebook, it automatically goes to Twitter. Or when I post on one of my sites, you know, it automatically goes to Twitter. So, and and uh, ArtPal, which I didn't even include on here. I forgot all about ArtPal. <laughs> Because I know Constance uses ArtPal.com. Uh, mm -hmm. ArtPal do, does a really good job. They automatically, it rotates. They automatically post on Twitter all the time. And Facebook and, you know, whatnot. Yeah, they do. Now, I didn't include Facebook in here because Facebook is how we use to get inf to get visitors to these other sites. At least that's what I do. Anything I post on Facebook, I usually, that's how I push them to my other, to my other sites. But that's just one method. So that's our challenge for next week <laughs> is one of these. And you guys don't even have to tell me. I'll just look them up before next week. <laughs> like, I, like I did this time. I just looked it up on the internet. I found you. Yeah. <laughs> and I, when I was looking at poor Diane, I was shaking my head. I said, Diane, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Donna, Diane runs a big farm, though. That's I, I know, you know, but she's. <laughs> really, she's got to get the word about her art is so good out there that it's not going to remember that movie years ago, that baseball movie. And said, if you build it, they will come. Diane, if you paint it, they won't come if they don't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ho yeah. Hopefully with you uh, entering in that OPA, getting accepted in that regional, that you could, you could really, uh, uh, bounce off that and increase your your other your presence on the other sites by posting about that. I mean, I noticed. I think you only had something on Facebook about it once, and it looked like you did something on Instagram, but you didn't put it mm -hmm. on the other sites. It's like, oh my God, Diane, you just it should, uh, been, it should have been on Twitter too, because I usually um, send it to Twitter when I maybe yeah on. yeah I think I yeah I saw some yeah. I saw something about I it. I don't get it on Twitter and I don't do anything on Twitter really other than that. <laughs> Twitter is, is so mean. Twitter is a 
Twitter is just a sinkhole of, of evil. I mean, it really is. So. <laughs> I never, I've never really understood Twitter, and I never really got into using it. So yeah, I, well, I I'm that way with the like uh, Pinterest over the top of my head most of the time. Pinterest is way over, and I, I, I really ought to be active on Pinterest. And I have so many people say so many good things about it. Pinterest. I've never really been able to utilize it that well. No, I, I do Pinterest a lot. Well, not a lot, but I do post things on Pinterest a lot. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Twitter. Twitter basically is is a follow per follower. So you you know you go on and and follow a bunch of people, and then they follow you back. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Kind of like yeah, kind of like the way yeah. Instagram does in a way. But uh, so you know, the only problem is on on what's called your feed. Then yeah, depending on who you follow, you're getting all kinds of you know and crap in there. Right. Yeah, crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Now, like on the Instagram, I've been going back to we we had a discussion, folks, before we recorded, and it made a lot of sense based upon a, uh, you know, a couple podcasts back when we had that one fellow who was giving uh, some advice on uh, on Instagram. That Instagram, and Facebook, pretty much works this way that uh, they have a tendency based upon the types of followers that you have, they will send that recommendation to you. So it's a good idea to go through and prune your followers so that you're only having people that are really possibly interested in your art and everything. So uh, I've been on my Instagram, I've been doing that, going back and pruning actively, you know, and, and it's, um, it seems to be, you know, working because before I started, started pruning them and before, you know, I, ha I don't post as often. You, they recommend you post every day. Well, I, I was posting like one image every once a week if I'm lucky. <laughs> but uh, now I've tried to increase my postings. And at the same time, pruning, I went from uh, 1,220 something up to where I'm at now, you know. So it, it's it's slowly building back up. And that's, that's a way of doing it. So next week, we will talk about all that. All right. So if we don't have anything else to discuss, anything coming up here? No. Uh -uh. Nope. I, I just have to send out my painting this week. It's like it's kind of like sticking your child in a mailbox. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's all I feel it's going to come like, back in one piece. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unscratched, yeah. undamaged. When I used to show a lot, that's, it, all, it seems like invariably something would come back with a mark on it either the frame or the painting itself. And it's just like, it just, it just kills you when it comes back marked up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully they'll sell it and they won't come back, but <laughs> yeah, that would be the great even thing. So. Yeah. Yep. We'll see. That's a key. That's a key point. But uh, yeah, I, uh, I went to the, to the OPA site and, and found you, Diane, looked at your, you mm -hmm. know, so I hope you sell it. That'd be a. They've closed their open enrollment right now, so I'm going to wait for their open enrollment and enroll again. Yeah, it starts at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. So yep. I have never enrolled there before, but I think I'm going to go ahead and do it. So what? What's the dates again, Diane? When that uh, exhibition is going to go on? <laughs> and then we'll wrap. We'll wrap this. Up. Um, the 20th of November till December 19th. Okay. So yeah, we'll have. But you, like you said, you can go onto the OPA um, uh, website, and the paintings are all listed there. And this is called the uh, the East Eastern Regional. What, what's it? The OPA Eastern Regional uh, Exhibition. There we go. Okay, <clears throat> we'll have another chance in probably the first episode next week, the first episode of November, and we'll uh, we'll talk about it again in the gifts for our listeners who uh, might have missed that. Okay, I think that's going to be it for this episode, and it is for October the 27th, Tuesday this time, the last episode for the month of October, and this was episode, the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 68, and I was here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson, and this coming weekend is Halloween, and that's usually my biggest time of the year for my internet radio station. There's a lot okay. of people that like those scary shows. So I've got a lot of programming to do the next two <laughs> or three days to get ready for that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I usually create the shows, pick them out, and program. I, you you know, might get more people listening this week, this year, because everybody's going to be home. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Not out partying. Yep, that's for sure. 
So I'm going to say bye-bye to Diane and Constance, and I'll let Diane say bye to everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Constance. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night, uh, Clyde and Diane, and thanks for listening. Thank you for listening, folks. Good night. And as always, give us a thumbs up. Give us some good star ratings. All right. Bye bye, folks. And have a happy Halloween next weekend. Okay. Yeah. Happy Google, Google Day. <laughs> bye bye, folks. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt. Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kim. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C B R O S N A N S. Clyde J. Kill at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.